Look at the size of this. Who's the other dude that's like trying to reverse his age? How much did you oh. make from that recent needles video? That's the current situation. Well, well, well. If it isn't, Sir Isambard Kingdom Brunel. I don't know where that came from, but we've got a call with Kenny in 15 minutes. Hopefully I'll record better audio this time for that. And then it's a bit of a weird day, to, day today actually. So we've got to finish off the needle mat video, the um, numbing cream. But before that, got this call with Kenny. I'm gonna go to, I, this is exciting for me. <laughs> um, Sam's Club to go and get like huge bags of candy. And Rugi loves looking around there. Just at the, I mean, everything's huge. So he's in this really cute phase where he sees something that he's like interested in. He goes, oh. Seriously cute. <laughs> so we're gonna get some massive bags of candy. And then Eckhart, gotta trim this old mop. And then we can get into the work. So. I mean, I'll film us maybe at Sam's Club, but obviously not going to film the haircut. That would be weird. Two, 213 days today of no poo, and it feels great. Like, the hair feels great. I, I don't feel any different about using shampoo or not. Ah, oh, yes, this... <laughs> Sometimes I leave myself a, a video voice note. So this is the one I left myself this morning. This is your mental note before you go into the gym of the idea you were talking about with Shay yesterday. Video, the why following doesn't matter on TikTok. In fact, it's actually a bad thing on TikTok, the whole gambling, yeah. So then come back to this. So last night I was explaining to my wife, TikTok seems to have this problem where it doesn't matter if you follow someone or not, you just end up not seeing their content. So on TikTok, it doesn't really matter how many followers you have because you rarely hit those. Like if you look at a video that does well, it's going to be like 98% for you page instead of two, like, you know, 90% or 60% following page. Now I've come up with why I think TikTok is so bad at hitting your followers. And it's, I don't think it's TikTok's fault, all right? Where do I start with this? So the successful TikTokers, the ones that hit hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views every single video, most likely have a formula. Like they know what they need to do in a video to make it perform well. Which means that every video follows a similar style whether it's the exact same thing like a trend every single video or like in my case it's the same workflow so you a, a viewer essentially knows what to expect when they see my video which is good and bad here's why it's bad if i'm a viewer and I'm scrolling the For You page, one of the things I love, and I think every viewer loves about TikTok, is that every thumb scroll is a gamble. You never know what you're gonna get in the next video to get that dopamine hit. But if you follow someone, and then one of their new videos shows up on the For You page, you see the first few seconds, and you instinctively know whether it's going to be, I should just explain this with Kenny, shouldn't I? Yeah. So right now I've just cut out like five minutes of me talking because I'm about to explain it to Kenny. So I'll just, so you don't have to listen to it twice. But it's funny how explaining that, it literally happened to me this morning watching TikTok. Can we, I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant right now. 
can we, why are haircuts in America so bloody expensive? Like I like my barber, she does a good job and it's not just her pricing, it's across the board. If I get my haircut back in England, like same haircut, it's gonna cost me between 10 and 15 pounds. So we'll call that 12 and $17. And there's no expectation of a tip. And if there is a tip, you only leave like, you know, a pound or two and that's considered like, oh, you know, I really appreciate that, thank you. But in America, my haircut is, is it 35? No, it's $30, might be 35. I think it's 30, which with tip comes out to $40 for a haircut that takes 30 minutes to do. And then my son's haircut, bear in mind, he's not even two years old yet, $25, $25 for like 10 minutes of work. Now I'm not putting down barbery, barber work as, you know, not valuable, but that much for a haircut for a guy that needs to be done every, like should be done every three weeks or so is crazy. Paying $70 every three weeks to get mine and my son's haircut done. That's mental. Let's go inside. All right, we're gonna give Kenny a call. Scott, screen recording. And new FaceTime. Should really change his name in here to Ken Dog. Is it Kenny Ferguson? It is. What up, skank? Velociassi. Velociassi. What are you doing out in the wild? I'm just getting some early morning sunlight, dude. So, uh, wh who are you, flipping Andrew Huberman? Oh, God, dude. That's so funny that you bring that up because I watched a video. I watched this guy named Will Tennyson. He's like a fitness guy a lot. And he did uh, Andrew Huberman's, like, morning routine in his life for like 72 hours straight and that shit was wild dude is it um who's whose life did he do andrew huberman oh um who's the other dude that's like trying to reverse his age the dude he did a video with that guy too i the did guy that's like yeah biologically like 40 he did a video with that guy like and it got like it got like 9 million views on youtube or some shit that shit was fucking nuts i haven't and he's like he was like, I spent a day with the with the person trying to biologically like roll back their age or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I um, I've got a friend, like from home that I grew up with. Well, kind of whatever. But he has a, a company out in Australia now that makes what's called NMN, which is like an anti aging type of drug. Yeah. So I'm making videos for him to use as ads. Oh, so okay, okay. I haven't started it yet, but I need to start doing that. But um, yeah, that guy is nuts. Like he's just sacrificed his whole life as to what it is to try and test if he can reverse his age, his biological age. That's mental. Yeah, that shit's fucking nuts, dude. His <laughs> entire like, dude, he spends millions of dollars on it. But I mean, I guess he has the money, so. He's a billionaire, isn't he? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Not bad. Um, yeah, you had you had a couple of topics that you were. I think battling with yesterday. You want to talk through those to start with? Yeah, bro. I, I'm battling through demons when I hate this shit. I feel like I'm in limbo and I'm dying. I'm fucking like, I'm like, I don't know. I got three, I got like three choices and I'm like, I don't know what to fucking choose, bro. Cause I almost just want to fucking just go into like straight up personal training and just start like actually doing something. I don't know. I build like my own like, fitness thing and build like a brand around it potentially like release my own supplements and products yeah i mean it's easy to it's easy to you know with like suppliful or something just a white label oh yeah su uh yeah suppliful just white labeling shit yeah exactly but i'll tell you like i tell you what though i you know we t we mentioned sam sulik the other week i started i've been trying to study why people love him so much and one of the things they love is that he never pushes products or tries to sell stuff. 
Yeah, he never does. And I think the viewers now are starting to come around to this w way of influencer and content creation as, like, don't try and sell me stuff, just use it. Yeah, and if I no, want it, I want yeah. it. He just he just uses it. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's all I would really do. I would want to build like the company, like almost like separate, basically like have my own thing. So it's its own brand. Actually, have it on like yeah, have it on like Amazon and stuff like that, like FBA. Yeah, and then like you're the face of the brand. Yeah, because I was reading that like health and wellness during like it is always up. It's like always the highest selling like market, even during like recessions and like the depression and shit like that people almost never cut out on spending money on like supplements for like their health or well-being which is wild but also makes sense yeah so you're thinking of just switching over to completely and only doing like food or health content yeah i don't know if i would i don't even know what i would do i don't i don't, I don't even know about my normal tiktok right now bro like, I don't know. I, I really enjoy the cooking. It's fun. But I'm also not out here doing shit for, like, a fucking hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, my, my videos are good, and they're not really going anywhere, so. I know. Um, I think, I wonder if it's... I, I have this thought. I just had this thought yesterday on why TikTok is the way it is. I don't know how much this actually plays into the problem you're having, but I'll explain it and then maybe it fits in somehow. But so you know how we've discussed followers don't really matter on TikTok. Yeah, it doesn't matter for shit. Yeah, and I think I, I, I've come up with a, I don't know if it's the right one. I've come up with an understanding of why. So you know that any big TikToker that consistently gets high views has a formula, right? For their videos. Yeah. And when you watch one of their videos, you know what to expect. Pretty okay. Much, yeah. All right, so what's one thing that we love about TikTok is that with every scroll, it's a gamble. Like you're essentially gambling with your time and you never know yeah, what you're going to get. So if you, if you follow someone and their video comes up on the For You page and you don't feel like watching it because you know exactly what's to come in terms of the type of content, you're going to scroll because you're going to be like, uh, I know what it is, but I don't want that right now. I want something else. Yeah. So then... Uh, that's essentially when you scroll that's a notification to TikTok to say I'm not interested in this video and the more times that they do that because they know what to expect even if they might enjoy it two hours later TikTok then starts to see that actually this person doesn't like these videos yeah and so we should stop showing them to that person yeah their algorithm is so like quickly like it adapts so quickly adaptable like it's ridiculous yeah um, so then I was, I was speaking to Shay about it last night and she was saying, I think if you follow someone, your videos should always show up on your for you page, regardless of how much you watch them previously. Yeah. And so if you then come to a point of you're no longer interested in that person and their content, you go and unfollow them to stop seeing it as opposed to the algorithm deciding you no longer want no, to see exactly. it. Exactly. Like that's how it should be. So then, like with your content, with a pivot, pivot to something different, based on the interest that each of your previous viewers has given to TikTok, TikTok has decided that now it's a different content. They don't want to give it. Yeah, it's whatever. No, that's exactly what it's done. Like, but also, I think, I don't know, I'm, I'll probably try for like another week. Because I shot a whole nother cast of videos where I did like, I actually did like voiceovers with them as opposed to doing like some of them that I sent you had like no sound and stuff like that. And I just don't think that's like the audience for me. Yeah. Like no voiceover type of things. So what I started doing uh, this past week is I started like fabricating like stories along with the meals because I like the, I like cooking, but also I don't think not everybody likes to be taught to cook. Yeah. Like you're just scrolling through TikTok aimlessly. You don't want to be taught something. Very few people want to be taught to cook. And there is a huge audience for it. Like, don't get me wrong. However, people just enjoy hearing like a story or some bullshit. So what I started doing was like just rambling, bro. Like I just started rambling. Okay. Uh so like when I did the I did this uh like 
the the food that represents each state best, which is actually kind of crazy, by the way. You know Joshua Wiseman? Uh, no. Um, who is that? He's like the biggest like cook sure. and like food content creation right now. Josh Vi Oh, is he the ponytail dude? Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. So he. So I started doing the uh, like meals from each state video. Yeah. Uh, videos like a couple weeks ago. He literally just dropped a YouTube video. I made a meal that represents each state and ranked them, and it got like over two million views within like four days. And I was like, "What the fuck, bro? Like that was my idea. Like I've been do. I was already doing this before I even touched it. No one has done this idea before. I was like, that's crazy. So I'm like, I know it works, but maybe the issue was maybe I I wasn't talking. Or it was being too, like, lesson learned. So, like, I shot one for California. And I was basically saying, like, I, I, I'd be saying, like, I'm trying to, like, grind people's gears. I was like, today we're doing California. And just to let you guys know, my opinion is the only one that matters in the series. So whatever I choose for the state, that's what their food is. And then I went into saying, when I think of California, I think of In-N-Out. And I was like, also... The weird thing is, I've never met somebody from California that hasn't almost immediately asked me within minutes, have you had In-N-Out before? It's the best burger place ever. And I was like, and I tell them every time, no, and I'm 27 years old and have still yet to try In-N-Out because I refuse. And I love telling people, no, I've never had it because I'm petty like that. Okay. So, yeah. so I'm kind of like rambling, like telling like a, like a backstory as to why I've never had In-N-Out and like nonchalantly crapping on like Californians. For, and I'm like saying that's all I have to offer. And then at the end of the video, I take a bite of it and I'm like, you know, I think I've been missing out my whole life. Eight out of ten. Yeah. So. So it's kind of like a like a reverse. Yeah, you've changed like how the t trying the food changes you and your opinion. Yeah. So I started like doing some stuff like that because I was like maybe <clears throat> people like not maybe not everybody wants to be taught. Like it's just fun to hear somebody rambling because there's this dude that is blowing up right now doing cooking stuff on TikTok, and he starts out every video and he's like uh um like today i'm gonna be baking shit that everybody says is super difficult to prove to you guys that's not that fucking difficult so i can boost my ego and this dude <laughs> this dude pulls like millions of views every video and it's just with that line what's like, it line do you know his name people let me see if i can find him because there was another small creator i seen last night he had like 3,000 followers. He used that exact line. He was averaging like three or 4,000 views per video. He used that exact line in one of his recent videos, and it got like 300,000 views. I'm like, bro, that line just hooks people. Like, what was it again? He, he basically says like, uh, can I not get an ad when I open TikTok, please? <laughs> oh, I know. Um, <laughs> it's so bad with TikTok shop and ads at the moment. Share play on TikTok? Bro, I can share a video live stream to you through over TikTok on this, that's crazy. Let's try it. I would love to if I could find the search button. That would be really nice. Others, oh, wait, is this just for friends? Okay, apparently I can't search videos on the feed while I'm FaceTiming you because the only button it shows where the video search would be is sharing you the TikToks I'm watching oh. live. Weird, okay. Let me see if he, I'm following him. Damn it, I don't think I am. You could probably literally just search the keywords though since their engine's so good now. Like, it literally just says, like, baking, baking shit that's supposed to be hard. Okay. And proving to you guys that's not or whatever. Baking's supposed to be hard. Oh, balling. Um... And he has like a, a light toned like cutting board that he always says start starts on. Sam Dot nope. But then again, it doesn't really matter because he pulls millions of views doing that. And then yesterday he did a video where he went to Costco and he made a like a hundred burritos and handed them out to homeless people. And when I checked it yesterday, it had like seventeen thousand views. I was like, that's so sad. Yeah, it is. People. But that's because TikTok, they just want to see you do and say the same thing, bro. Unless you're the, uh, like, I'm talking to a girl right now, and she knows what I do and everything. So it's, like, I guess easier. So I was, like, I was telling her, I was, like, TikTok is, like, mad annoying. Yeah. Short form is mad annoying because unless you're part of that 1%, people want to hear you say it and do the same exact thing every single time. Yes. Well, well... 
it's like you have to make a puzzle. You have to find a way to build a puzzle if, <laughs> that works on TikTok. And if you don't yeah. find a puzzle that works on TikTok, it doesn't matter what you make. Exactly. And if you don't keep taking out and putting in that same piece, unless you find a brand new puzzle, it's like, it's a mystery. Where the, where's my puzzle piece? What the fuck? I know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think people, I think every random person who isn't in social media and even like the less experienced creators think it's just a case of like, it's luck to go viral. It's not, it's far from luck. It's, I mean, I mean, I think TikTok's algorithm will spontaneously push. Oh, I'm about to get attacked by dogs. I think TikTok's uh, algorithm will spontaneously push out random, a couple random videos here and there on people's like newer accounts to give them that like. Oh yeah. That dopamine, but I think that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, maybe there's a couple of just random ones that are it's designed around giving people that hit when they're first starting out to you know keep chasing it. Yeah, because I've, I've just been thinking, like, where I'm at right now. Like, I'm back in Norfolk right now. It's the largest population of military in the world. And, like, the gyms I go to here, they're insane. Like, they're disgustingly insane. And the people are, like, monsters. Like, everybody looks like they're on steroids. But I'm, like, I'm trying to think, like, what I do daily that I could apply to, like, a brand and a product long term, if that's the route I took. I'm, like, there's so much, like, military here. And there's so many people that are like in health and fitness and wellness because of the military population. Like that would be such an easy market. What do you, yeah, but what do you enjoy? Like, yeah, but sorry, let me just stop for a second. No, you're fine. That market is right there. So if you're making local videos and local ads, yeah, that might be good. But for the wider audience of TikTok, where you are right now does not, doesn't matter, does it? No, no, I agree. I just mean that in terms of like getting my foot in the door with like a product. Oh, I see. People try things. You oh. Know, or like, or saying like, "Hey, can I put my stuff in your in your gym?" What do you enjoy? Like, if, forget about making content. Like, what do you enjoy? That's exactly what I've been thinking about. And when I when I think, what do I enjoy? I enjoy I enjoy cooking food. I enjoy eating food, and I enjoy exercising. Okay. Over all those, I enjoy traveling, but traveling requires money, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But not like, not tourist traveling. Like, I'll go back to India for two months real quick. Dude, I, you wouldn't, you couldn't pay me to go and live in India. Dude, <laughs> you could pay me to go experience any culture, sleep in any village, sleep on any ground, sleep with the cows. It's, I'd love it. Okay, you and I cut from a different cloth <laughs> there. Wait, so, so what, uh, like, so if you're wanting content that fits across those, I think what, so you enjoy eating, who doesn't enjoy eating? And I mean that as a good thing. Yeah, I would do my food videos more. It's just so costly and it's so like unhealthy to eat um, like food like that all the time and make videos about it. Yeah, and- when I was doing like the spicy series, that spicy food series. Dude, I garnered like a hundred million views across all platforms with like ten videos. This is this is what I'm saying. That that's kind of the train of thought that I was thinking when you were texting me yesterday that I thought I would say for today is why don't you those food type videos, why don't you make more of those and then like slowly bridge it across to making your own spicy wings or something? Yeah, like you can do like a sauce and a product, which is pretty pretty not, well, I guess not easy, but it's not that rock designs. Yeah, true. Oh, so you're thinking, so part of you thinking about what content you want is also thinking about what products you can develop down the line. Well, yeah, because for me, I'm also thinking like if I get tired of filming content, like always being in front of a camera, always doing something, it's like I at that point, I'll just swap over to like trying to build like a business, like e-commerce business, because I have... I have a lot of money saved up. That's good. Yeah, I remember you saying you had a lot saved up. Like, so... Yeah, but... Uh, right now, I guess I'm just in limbo with everything because I enjoy, like, content on social media, but also I don't know the longevity of it and I don't want to be hung out, like, five years from now, like, when I burn out from it and not have, like, an exit strategy or, like, a proper buildup in the back of it. 
So I guess this then goes into one of the other things we were discussing was you were saying like, should I just kind of give up on TikTok and go all in on long form? And I think... Yeah, because like, TikTok feels like such a fucking gamble all the time. Yeah. If you're thinking of selling products, let's say, let's say, I don't know, let's say there was a product that fit with what you're doing on TikTok. Like when you were getting the crazy views in your old storytelling style, let's say there was, yeah. there was a product. I don't know what it is, but let's say there was a product. Same with me right now. I couldn't sell it on TikTok. And no, you probably yeah, couldn't either. No, no. So why focus on TikTok and trying to make a product for content you make on TikTok instead of thinking about what content you could make on YouTube, unless that's exactly what you're doing right now? Yeah, because the way I also see it is like we're we're in the same boat right now that we were a year ago. Like a year ago, we we're talking about the same things. Yeah. And it's like. Like, tick, like short form just has this like like choke, bro. I know because it it's like so easy to your neck. get another hit of that dopamine, isn't it? You can you can make yeah, a video, or a couple of videos in a day. Yeah, because I edited I edited five food videos yesterday. And I spent like seven hours. And I edited all of them. I'm like, damn, that's work for a week. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's almost like a YouTube video. Yeah. For a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and being able to do it all in one. And, and like, yeah, you have multiple chances of, you know, doing well. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's such like, because I've been like, like I was saying, that Will guy that I watch, he does like fitness, but he doesn't do it like, it's not like, it's not like, um, it's not very teaching based. It's like fun, like challenges, yeah. like pushing your body to a limit, you know, and when I say fitness and food, I'm saying this dude does like I ate like the like I ate like my six hundred pound wife for fifty hours straight. And yeah, this dude is just like killing himself. I remember you told like, me about this guy a while back. Yeah, yeah. And then the next video will be like, uh, the next video will be like I, I went vegan and worked out for a week, work, like a week straight, like random things like that. But it's yeah. like fun, and I always find myself going back to fitness, like. Even right now, if I'm not working, like, I just go to the gym and I work out and I, like, talk to people, like, it's just what I always do, but I don't know if, like, obviously we know YouTube is also a gamble. I reckon you, so, uh, Sam Solak is changing the game for the fitness industry, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think... I smell like a, I smell like a Brit right now, bro. What do you mean you smell like a Brit? I smell like a Brit, bro. You guys don't wear deodorant. <laughs> I don't know if that's everyone. I don't wear deodorant. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but I reckon, I reckon you should. I don't know. I don't know how, but capitalize on the switch in movement in the fitness industry because it's going from obviously what yeah. it was to just more chilled Everybody's out videos are getting so long on youtube like yeah. i like that i would say almost the majority of youtube videos i see now are like almost 20 minutes plus my last hang on my last um five videos let me see here hour 12 two hours hour 40 hour hour 20 like I'm aiming for between one and two hours in a video. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, so I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. So I think there's being a shift in the market in terms of consumption. So, you know, TV shows used to be 20 to 30 minutes, right? Yeah. TV shows are now getting, bro, The Last of Us, it was a movie every episode. It was an hour and a half. It was an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half. The last one, I think, was an hour 40. Oh. So, yeah, it's like it's like uh, the the entertainment industry on the, the 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 high level is shifting towards longer form. So it's like I feel like YouTube is shifting into fill in that twenty to thirty minute gap now. Because even if you look at Mr. Beast videos, his videos are all longer now. He's not doing eight minute flat videos anymore. He's doing twelve minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. So you He's reckon his videos out? You reckon the sweet spot is twenty to thirty minutes? Yeah, unless you're doing like a podcast form, obviously. Yeah. So, what style would you make in that twenty to thirty minutes? What's what? 
you know, what type of video is it? It would be like, like a conglomerate of like, um, anywhere between like 72 and I don't know what a week of hours is. So three to seven days. <laughs> I th- yeah. Uh, putting myself through like certain like experiences, like it's just like fun stuff. Like doing, for example, Mark Wahlberg's like trending again because he's launching like his uh, like 57th fitness company. Um, Jeez. And it's like, yeah, I know. It's crazy. And it's like putting yourself through Mark Wahlberg's morning routine. A lot of people have heard that dude's morning routine is nuts. But yeah. Not really many people have seen it let alone seen an average person try to experience it. And this dude wakes up at like 2.30 a.m. I saw, I've read something about this. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so it's like putting yourself through like his routine for a day or something like that. And it's like eating the food that he eats, like you're following this person's life to a T. So are you essentially going to be not copying exactly, but similar style to Will? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Similar style to Will. Like... Will's done videos like that, or like um, his name is Haiji. He did. Uh, he's another like fun fitness guy. When Thor: Love and Thunder came out, he he did um, Thor Ragnarok, or what, what is his actual Ragnarok? Name? Ragnarok? I don't. I actually don't know the name. The Australian guy that plays that guy. Um, oh yeah. Um, I he, he did his workout like he did his workout for like a week straight or something like that this dude was in the road in the suburbs like pulling a truck with some with some ropes and he's like a little like 140 pound asian dude it was so funny <laughs> but it's like uh it's almost like what is his name the guy that have you seen the videos of the guy that puts like high-end expensive cars through torture uh through torture or oh, oh like, uh whistling like diesel he destroys them Whistling yeah, whistling diesel. Yeah. It's almost like that. You're using your body is the test as opposed to like whistling diesel uses like a car as a test. Oh, so you're thinking use your body as the test. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but you can't do anything too crazy with your body, can you? Like No, bro, my body's broke. Yeah, so but, you're but like yeah, super Will limited. Do, Will doesn't do like insane things though. He doesn't do any he doesn't do like these Mr. Beast ideas like, oh, I lifted like a truck or something. He literally just like does normal stuff like eating my, uh, he went like his recent video, got one of his recent ones got like over 4 million views and he went to fat camp. He just, he just signed up and went to fat camp with a bunch of fat people. Yeah, I see that now. 3.2 mil a month ago. Yeah, that was hilarious. I and, see. Okay. and if you watch his content, he's our age. And he has, like, the most crude, like, dry sense of humor. Like, he says, like, the wild stuff. Yeah. He seems like a funny dude. And, and he just doesn't care. Like, he says some wild stuff. Sometimes he'll say stuff and he'll be like, was that racist? And his wife will be like, no, no, that, I don't think so. And he'll be like, okay, good. Yeah. But they, I, you're starting to see that that, um, that type of, we'll call it unhinged, like the the person who really cares about their image would pull that out and they just wouldn't run the risk of it. Yeah, exactly. But he's focused on himself being the brand and not worrying about other companies being his brand. And that's what has made him, and that's what is making these people like actually mean something because for years we've been focusing on brands making us a brand and not making ourselves a brand. And that's why we're still in the same conundrum. We're still in the same exact loop that we were a year ago. Yeah. Unless we're part of like that 1%, there's no point there's no way to separate it like anything. I could go back to tech if I really wanted to probably and start making 150 200k like miles above tech and these other guys that I talk to still they're making so much money. Like miles above tech has made over 200k this year and he he was just in Korea. They flew him to Japan. Uh, he was just in Europe uh, for an Xbox event at, like, an F1 race for the new Forza game. Like, he's all over the place. But, like, no, I mean, he's making good money, obviously. But for me, it's like, okay, so in two years, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. I hope you're, like... Are you enjoying he's, that he's enough? have really good ties, so he'll probably just be able to get a job anywhere, like, with anyone uh, in, like, one of these companies. But it's like, if that's not what you did, 
Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, because you're, you're just making video after video for... Like, I think making videos in that space, like, nothing obviously against the people making those videos, but you could, you could disappear tomorrow and no one would care because all you're and doing is bringing something new every video. There's no building. And that's exactly what I was telling... Bro, see this deodorant? It's magic. Anyways, <laughs> that's exactly what I was telling the person I was talking to yesterday. It's like if the 99% of people on TikTok disappear tomorrow, no one is batting an eye. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. So that's why I've, I'm like on this route now of like either, either I go full in on YouTube and I focus on myself as brand and I might just waste all my time or... I just don't do social like social media for myself anymore and I just start my own like private label like company and start doing like Amazon FBA and start marketing that company and actually focusing on a company versus myself growing in that company. So you're really so I really the ins and outs of social media and reaching out to people and talking to them obviously. So you're really considering giving up on your own social media or content yeah. creation. Yeah, and it's not because it's like, oh, it's too hard or blah blah blah. It's like one one has a higher probability of success than the other does. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I feel like I'll I'll just talk from my perspective. I I'm not making videos because I see they get views and I could make ser some serious money. I'm making it because I actually fell in love with making videos and the whole process. So for me, building my brand is gonna be on, I just kind of explained through the steps, building my brand is gonna be on YouTube where I just kind of like talk through as if like it's a podcast, I'm just in my head, but I'm just talking to a camera. Yeah. And TikTok is not necessarily anymore for me about building uh, a brand or a massive community, it's about just making videos that I enjoy making doing. Making whatever money you can. Oh, making, okay, making the videos you enjoy doing. Yeah. And obviously right now it's a place where it generates the revenue I need to uh, keep my wife and baby alive. <laughs> but <laughs> keep my wife and baby alive. Yeah. Bro, I wish I could get in that program. If I was in that program, maybe I'd feel a little bit different. Yeah, I'm sure I you would. Get in the program. I, I, I don't understand why, yeah. Um, yeah, because that, I mean. It won't let me change my number without having another number. So what are you. Without having that number, so. What are you doing for money at the moment? Just kind of living off of what you have? Uh, well, luckily, I am bro pretty broken, so the military pays me money every month. Nice. That's pretty good. <laughs> also, well, not so nice, but, you know. Yeah. Also, like, I'm enrolled in, um, like, I'm enrolled in school. I haven't started yet. I don't know if I'm going to start, but I was just going to go to school, like, half-ass in the background, because they'll pay me, like, $2,000 a month to go to school. I remember you like, saying... Mm, that's a free two thousand dollars. Yeah, for for however many hours a a month or a week. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like so. So you're also kind of in this place of you have that added stressor of you're making content because you need to make money, which takes you out of that creative space and wanting to do it because you enjoy it, doesn't it? Yeah, like I don't need to make the money right now. I'm, yeah. I'm well, perfectly fine. Like. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just leave the U.S. and probably never work again. In yeah, my life. that's nice. Yep. <laughs> if I really wanted to, but it's like I, I need to have it like in the middle. Like I don't need to. I don't need to be making a bunch of money, but I just I need to see some. I would like to see some sort of like results from what I'm posting and doing. And I guess that's what I'm gonna see in the next week or so with the new types of videos that I'm saying I started to film. With like having more voiceover. And having, you know, like my ranting, I'm, I'm saying shit that's more, like, triggering to people. Like, I started doing this Lonely Man series, and where I call up my friends from the military. And I'm like, hey, when were you the most depressed and why? And what food did you eat? And I started making their food that they ate during their, like, biggest depression and telling their story. And some of this is wild. I bet it is. Like, let me... <laughs> I'll send you two that I recently did. It's not like, so since I'm filming these more of like a story base, 
they're not like this like super high quality like filmography it's more so like i'm just making these things and telling the story along with it but some of them like i filmed two of my friends already and i'm like this this is this stuff's kind of crazy like it's just so funny and then also i like and one that i sent you you'll see i placed all the items that i was making in the video in just the most absurd places possible and at the end of the video, I like I take the drink that they drank themselves basically to death with, and I like cheers to the camera and I drink it. And it's disgusting for one. I hate alcohol so much. Yeah. It's putrid, bro. Yeah, it's horrible. But like I did, a, you'll see the video when it comes to. But I did one recently for my friend Corey, and this girl like left him, and he was just eating like chocolate and brown sugar and vodka, like every day. And he was so distraught, it, like, destroyed him. So I put, like, Mr. Beast chocolate bar in my junk drawer. I put the vodka in the microwave. And I made brown sugar butter toast, which is, like, a ghetto poor man's dessert. And I put the butter in a rice cooker. And I put the brown sugar in, like, the microwave. And I'm grabbing all these things from, like, those compartments while I'm making it and telling the story. Do you... I, we kind of talked about this last week. But do you ever feel that doing those things because of how stupid they are people lose, it, it It reduces your, I don't know, authenticity or someone's like, that's just stupid, I'm going to scroll. Or do you think it's it has a better turnout for people seeing it and being like, that's funny, so I'm going to comment? Yeah, I think people love that stuff because when I did the video with like uh, Gordon Ramsay's grilled cheese, I used scissors to spread the butter. Yeah. And that was like one of the most commented things. Do you ever, I, I, I agree, but do you feel like people look at that and think this is stupid? Like this content is stupid because oh, hundred percent people look at that and think that. But if you're then trying to build a brand off of that stuff, you you really want to build that that trust and authentic not authenticity that um, reliability that what you've done to make this product is all the right stuff. Because if you're and I'm just thinking out loud. If your content is kind of a joke and has loads of jokes in it, that are stupid. In a, I mean that in a good way. No, yeah. Then, ha then how does that uh, translate into how people perceive your brand? Yeah, I guess right now I'm just trying to get more into like telling the stories while I'm cooking and seeing how I can make it the most entertaining possible while I figure out all the ropes. Okay. Because it's like. I, for example, there's this guy on YouTube, his, his like YouTube handle is Your Cooking Sucks, and he does kind of stuff like that. He'll pull, he'll pull onions out of like a dishwasher like while he's cooking. This dude has millions of subscribers, and that's what he does every video. Yeah, you suck at cooking. <laughs> Here we go. You'll see him, he'll pull like potatoes from like the trash can, like just random things. Is he faceless? Yeah, he's faceless too. Okay. Like, what is this? He's got every video of his is cooking, and there's just a random M1 MacBook Pro, the actual truth. I'm not, yeah, I'm so not even joking. It's just one tech video in the middle of everything. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess... What do you, how, how do you think you're going to do it? You think you're just going to keep... You know, just throwing out multiple different styles and just see what hits and then just try and build on that one. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what I'm going to do. It's it's just so, it's so annoying. Like when you see other people, like I wanted to do cooking live action because I think it's fun. I say more like off the wall things, but it wasn't like, it didn't seem to be working very well. But it's like, it's annoying because I feel like we're already locked in pretty decently locked into like a niche on tiktok and like you were saying if people don't like like the people that are following you don't like what you're posting it's not gonna post it really push it to new people so it's like i think you if you're gonna go live action you have to start fresh and you have to basically all the time you've taken to build up your current channel you're gonna have to do that all again and get people used to seeing your face on that account exactly. as the guy who just does live action exactly and building like a fresh account on TikTok in this today's age, I think is like not. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Thing. Yeah, I know. There's not nearly as many users. There's not nearly as many people active anymore. Like it's not as trending. 
and trying to trying to start the channel like it used to be that every video would do pretty well when you started but now the video has to be exceptionally good you have to get over 70 percent retention in the first three seconds for a video to do well yeah and if you're yeah, a new account trying to find the right people and tiktok is trying to place you it is so difficult yeah that's why like that's not even worth it um, I know, and it's so demoralizing to be like, I've, I've spent five hours on this video, I can post it to my account with 700k followers, or I can post it to my account with nothing. Yeah. But... On TikTok, it's horrible. Yeah. But, I don't know, dude, I mean, you're, it's a hell of a predicament, because you've come so far with what you've been doing, to then switch again, but equally, like, this is, this is essentially going to be your job this has to be your job as to what you're going to be doing every single day exactly that's why i was saying like the eating the food videos like that always does well that always does well people really love people seeing people eat food so <laughs> like but it's like besides that what can i do because eating food is really hard to market on tiktok or like make money from so it's like besides eating food like what can i do to like subsidize potentially on there Speaking of, actually, what's his name seems to have fallen off. What was the... Keith. Keith I, haven't, I haven't seen him in a long time. No, bro, he still pulls millions of views. Uh, just, TikTok's just not showing you. Yeah, yeah, he's still, like, I guess I'm looking here. Apart from the last, like, six videos, every video is a couple of million. So, yeah, I guess. But yeah, he... He has made so much money. I it's bet. absolutely insane. I, like he, yeah. he drives like, he has like an Escalade now, a Tahoe, bought a brand new house, has this like insane shoe collection. He was just invited to our, he was at um, Kevin Hart's like brand new restaurant opening. Like Kevin Hart called him personally and like, he's like friends with Kevin Hart now and like all these like famous people. The dude's, he's set for life. He's, he's yeah, good. He's, he's good. He's, he's done. But, um, Someone else who is meant to be very authentic, you know, Alex Earl. Yeah. People, people seem to love her. They say that she's incredibly real and authentic. I have a, I, a blonde white girl, right? Yeah, I have a really different idea. Like having seen bits of her content. Do you have yeah. any opinion? I think she's like. I, I think she's like a stereotypical like, like fake like blonde girl, bro. Like rich. Yeah, like a ritzy, like, blonde girl. But people love that. I don't know why. I know, it's like... Like, if I had blonde hair, I'd probably be flourishing right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a couple of videos now, very recently. And like, I don't really, I don't have any beef at, at all with it. But one of the videos was her showing her outfit. And it was actually like a, like a dressed up going out outfit. And she's like, yeah. I feel like I'm just going to go pick up the kids. And then some girl stitches it who's actually going to pick up her kids. And she looks like... The same as my the wife going can. shopping, <laughs> right? With no, I know seriously. I mean, like my wife going <laughs> shopping, <laughs> like where you just you don't really care that much. Yeah, like you're just wearing your jumpsuit, like just like just whatever it is, because you know you have to go and get so much done. And then another yeah. video, she's showing her IDs when she was like 17 and whatever age she is now, and it's a completely different person. She's like, why? Why do I look so different? Like I don't know what has happened and. All the comments are just lip filler, work done, blah, blah, blah. Like, how do you not realize all, like, what makes you look so different? Yeah. And I just, that, and I don't mean this to, like, crap on things, but that, and then Sam Sulek, as, as natural and authentic as he is, he's a dude on Tren or Roids or whatever it is, right? Like, he's it has on, to be. He's on everything. Like, how, how... I, I get that he's a good person, seems like a good person, but how is someone that underlying everything is promoting, st I'm not saying he is, but just being no, no, who yeah. he is? It's, it's because to be successful on social media, you need to either one, piss off everyone, or two, you need to push yourself out of being normal. So Sam is a jolly green giant that is highly intellectual, that is built like the Hulk seven ways to Sunday, and he doesn't express himself in any way, shape, or form like that. So it's like it's like if you met an ogre, if ogres were real, and he was super friendly and spoke English and was like 
inviting you in and like trying to take care of you and host you you'd be like what is this this does not make any sense or like like what you're saying with alex earl she's like this super like ritzy like fake girl and people love that like people people don't like the normal people don't want to see the person going to pick up their kids in a trash bag people want to see the person either jumping out of an airplane with no parachute into a volcano trying to use their pants as a parachute or they want to see somebody that's like digging their own grave into the ground which is what sam salk is technically doing yeah like putting in this immense like hard work and effort and just like going against the grain of society so is do you think that there's this crazy underlying desire for people watching his videos because they know that it's like a ticking time bomb and they're like they, they do not realize it but they're actually watching because they know something bad's gonna happen well i think there's some people that are like that but i actually i enjoy watching sam just because of like his like raw like just demeanor like his authenticity behind everything like he doesn't approach things as like like i was saying he's against the grain he's not like this meathead like he doesn't he looks like it but he doesn't give off like this douchebag like meathead grunting vibe yeah and you just like seeing do you like you like the pauses in his videos yeah, i actually love them like i really do like them and that's what like if if you were to watch one of will's videos will's is pretty similar like will's videos are pretty drawn out like 15 20 30 minutes and he'll do a lot of like pauses he'll he'll sit there and have like full conversations with the camera uh he'll insert like random facts like it's not just like your standard like mr b it's not even anywhere close to a mr b style video they used to be didn't they not mr beast style but more retention based didn't they or am i wrong uh, I, don't, I don't think so because he's always started out like that like four years ago he started his channel after he graduated during covid and he was like and it would just be like him performing like certain like acts and demonstrations and then like talking to the camera and saying like oh here's a fun fact like mark Wal mark Wahlberg does this 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 and this and one of his favorite meals to eat is um is meatballs and we're not gonna eat one meatball we're not gonna eat two we're not gonna eat four we're gonna eat 12 dry ass cold meatballs in my car today um, because for some reason, Mark Wahlberg likes to eat that. And it's, uh, it's a snack. It's not even an actual meal. I'm having to, this is a snack apparently. And it's horrible. And then he'll start eating the meatballs and he's like choking on them. So it's his, it is his personality too, that dry sense of humor. Yeah, he has a very like dry sense of humor. Like he says. How do you, how do you capture an audience? Be, like how do, how does Sam Selleck capture an audience? I'm thinking about this from a, I, I guess just let's speak very generally. How do you think he captured an audience to begin with? Um, I think it's because his, his portray, like how he portrays himself is so average, but he's not average. It's like, it's like Bill Gates wearing Walmart clothes, Adam Sandler shopping at, at Target. Like, Sam, like when Sam hit a million subscribers, his million subscriber video, he gets in the car and he goes, hey guys, we hit a million subscribers. Woohoo. We're doing fucking legs today. It doesn't really matter. And then he just goes about his video normally. Like it's just a normal guy. Like it does not matter. Yeah, but when he first started, like you, you think, imagine you making a brand new channel right now. How do you get people to watch you? He posted before he even took off. But he's only been on YouTube for like nine, ten months. What? Yeah, like his first video was only like nine or ten months ago. That's insane. And he... You, his stuff got pushed to everybody. Yeah, but... Like, but, he, did, he did like one of those social media blasts, bro. That's... He had to have. I gotta talk to you about what I'm doing for that at the moment as well. Yeah, so like his first video was nine months ago. But when you look at the videos in between, he's only getting like 40,000 views, 30,000 views. So he started taking off. Yeah, but I would say that his first videos probably didn't get many views. And then as he started to blow up, people have come back yeah, to his beginning were going videos. To, to watch his shit, yeah, 100%. That's exactly what happened. Which I yeah, think. Around like four months ago, he started hitting 100K plus pretty much every video. Yeah. And it just kept amplifying. So, I, the, like, the major question I have is. I don't know what I, here's what I'm doing. 
And I, I want to hear what you think of this. If this is a Casey Neistat of fitness, bro, it's crazy. So I have, um, I make my long form videos, right? And they're just, they're just whatever. And it's about me being a, a content creator. And so my plan to market the YouTube channel is I have an editor who's editing the clips. So I cut the clips up, send them into a Dropbox folder, drive folder. He takes them, edits them, puts them into another folder. I have a guy setting up an automation now to post, to pull from each of those folders and send to a TikTok, a YouTube and an Instagram account. And I have three fan pages set up across each of the different platforms. So I have nine accounts that will just yeah. be fan based content. Each channel will have different videos, but there'll be like three or so videos going to each account per day. And that's my way of getting the eyes on it. Cause I feel like it's one of those things of, it just has to be people seeing the content. You know, what's crazy is Come if, on, you better go out. If, like what you're, what you're just talking about for that. If, if you, if we're trying to run a social media ad agency or like a social media agency, I think that'd be like the biggest 200 IQ play ever because like you're talking about the content creation, you're talking about all this stuff. I'm like, bro, if you partnered, like if, if you had an agency, like if you're, Hang on, I'm so like sorry. Exact, give me, bro, sorry, give me a second. I'm going to drop them off. I'm about to go out. No, you're good. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Have a nice walk, Riggies. <laughs> All right, sorry. 200 IQ ad agency. You think yeah, the like play would... A social media agency where like you train like, like businesses and companies and stuff like that. Like that's exactly how you do it. It's so funny. Like that's how other people do it too. Yeah, uh, I think that is the, I think that's the move. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But I don't know. I don't know how else. I, I guess I have this idea that if you see someone's face enough times. What the fuck? Yeah, that's a dog. That's actually a dog. No, I oh. did a thumbs up. Like, like I was like this, and it did a thumbs up on my thing because I upgraded like my iPhone to the new iOS, and it's like my phone's all different. It's weird. Okay. I'm like the beta thing. Oh, weird. Okay. Um. But that, yeah. So I think on social media, I think why Sam blew up is because I don't. I'm pretty certain that all of these fan accounts of his, they're not all actual fan accounts. I think. He's either doing it himself or he's paid an agency to to he take his clips. He could have, but also you have to remember people are followers. So when people start to see somebody blowing up or some people posting clips of certain people they like, they'll start to do the same thing because there's also two ways that you can do it. Like, you know, Tyler Oliveira or whatever. The guy yeah. About before? Dude, it, he'll put out posts on his YouTube community tab saying, T whoever takes a clip from my most recent YouTube video, posts it on TikTok, yeah, posts it on TikTok, and whoever gets the most amount of views, I'll send you, I'll cash up you 200 bucks. Alright, so, you t I think you mentioned this and to he'll me. Get, he'll get millions of views, dude, I don't know. I, I, millions of views. I think that's the move. I, I definitely think that's the move. Uh, I, I had another idea on that kind of level, which is, like, let's say, let's say things start to kick off on YouTube. As a community, we create one social media account, which is like a fan page of mine. And you have, I don't post to it, but it's an account that I manage. Fans can make videos of my content, drop them in a Google Drive, I had someone mod it, and then they all get posted to that one social media account. And then as a fan base, we all watch that account grow. So it's like people have, part ownership in that account. Any money it makes gets split between the people who've submitted videos. Yeah. But it's like a a fan generated social media account. I feel like that would be so cool. Like you imagine Casey Neistat back in the day, if you could have been a part of helping grow an account with his content, just like editing his content. Yep. That would have been so sweet to, to feel that like dopamine hit of a, a video doing well and seeing an account grow that you've done something for. I think that would yeah, be huge. Should, like it'd be so much fun, dude. So that's that's my plan as we grow up. But this is this is why I think I'm still trying to work out how Sam 
got any kind of traction because you if you click on in one of his videos as a a random person it's boring as hell and you don't want to stay and watch right like he's like he's like he's like the bob ross of fitness bro there has not been somebody around like that in the fitness community in like yeah so why 20, 30 years. why are people why are people staying? I think it's because think they see like, his face so much. also goes through a cycle. Like, YouTube goes through a cycle. He gives, like, old-school YouTube nostalgia, and he's also vlogging and posting every single day. So it's like you cannot get him out of your head. Like, I, you can't. I, and I think that is the key. I think people, if they see a face enough times, they start to be like, well, who is this guy? I see him all the time. I have to know who he is. And then they start to investigate. They have their own desire, and then eventually they get hooked. I think that's how it works. It's not just. Yeah, you're just, it's, you're just blasting. I think. Yeah, I think. I think that's what it is. I've been trying to work Social it out. Media blasting. Yeah. So, as of next week, <laughs> that's what I'll be doing. So, if you see my face everywhere, just know that those. I'm. I'm also very open about the fact that these fan accounts are my accounts. Yeah. <laughs> but if you see loads of fan accounts, just know <laughs> that it's just me. <laughs> so you found an editor. Yeah, I just I found one on Fiverr. Um, okay. Two fifty a clip. Two dollars fifty a clip. So I'm sending him. So if I I vlog five days a week, I'm sending him ten clips a day, paying about six hundred dollars a month. In that, and then once the automation is set up, that then runs consistently for free. So I essentially have a six hundred dollar a month charge, cost to putting out 200 pieces of content. 200 gotcha. plus pieces of content, which is mental to think about. Yeah, that's really crazy. Um, so I'm trying to build the system because I've tried doing it manually on my own and it just takes so much time. Oh, I don't doubt it at all. Do you need to go out? How much did you make from that recent Needles video, bro? Uh, my RPM on TikTok has been a disgrace. Let me have a look. Yeah, people have been saying like their RPMs have been horrendous lately. Dude, you know what's another big thing that's gonna start training a lot? Hang on, hang on. I gotta take this dog out. It's like like a monkey whining at me. Can you hear it? Okay. Yeah, it's just... Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, Lila. <laughs> Alright, I'll call you back. Yo, sorry about that. Um, you are, I, the last thing I remember is you asked me what's my RPM for the needle mat videos. Yeah, and then, before I forget real quick, the, what I was saying is YouTube, they are, like, like, you don't need affiliate links anymore, they have that product linking that I was saying, and they sent me an email because I'm in, like, their creator program or whatever, and they said they're, like, almost paying, like, six time rates for the rest of the year. And some of these products, bro, like you can tag any products you want in your video. They don't have to be in your video. Dude, peop I've seen people making a lot of money on that stuff. And that's like, like those people that have like those blast accounts that have like drop shipping and like all kinds of random stuff. Like, dude, it's crazy. It's insane. I it's bet insane. it's crazy money to you made. Yeah, I still, I remember you mentioning it. I still haven't seen it because I'm obviously on the new account. Mm. But I bet. I bet there's a ton of money to be made, but I'm also seeing how um, TikTok shop, people, I don't think people like TikTok shop. Bro, people think it's like, people think it's a scam. So yeah. people see you have an item in a video and it's like, has TikTok shop link, people don't, they don't mess with it. Mine, I could, I, like, I sh shit you not, I've probably gotten over 30 million views on videos with products in it, like my products, my merch. Yeah. I've sold like four things. Dude, it's it's because people don't trust it, but the crazy thing is with this whole TikTok shop thing, this is actually, so with Archie Technology, me and him were supposed to do this big deal with like TikTok um, like two years back where we helped like expand their marketing and e-commerce with like basically what they're doing right now. Because the whole premises of TikTok and the app and the shift that they're trying to take is going to being like a full e-commerce like product site. Yeah, I bet. Social media, and that's kind of what they're slowly like rolling into now. Dude, I, I can't.
can't almost watch a TikTok without there being a product tagged in it now. And I don't even, I don't even like being on the app anymore. I freaking freeze dried Skittles everywhere. Yeah. I know. I, um, I know it's really annoying that side of it because I, I mean, I guess that also leads into the fact of community on TikTok, like. It's all my merch. I wear it in every single video and still know it. Maybe it's just crappy merch. I don't think it is. But people just aren't interested. And that goes back to that fan base type thing. But yeah. do you, you want to see... What, what, what? Do you want to see the CPM for the needle map? Yeah. Ow. So one of the videos... It's at 2.1, but it's only saying that 1.3 million views have qualified so far. I don't even understand how they, like, what? Uh, I think it's just, it has to be a view over five seconds, can't be a recurring view, and it lags like a day or so behind. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, current RPM is 44 cents, which has made me just under $600. Then the other one, oh, here... But it's also like, how successful, how often do you think you can push those videos out? I mean, I could do, I could do three videos a week. Yeah. So. See, that's, a, that's another thing for me right there too, that makes me think about it. So you know how we're talking about how like TikTok is such like a short term game? Yeah. It's like, I like, like it's sick as fuck that you made all this money. It's cool that these people are making all this money. And obviously I've made my fair share other places too. But it's like, how, like, none of this stuff is permanent. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but what, what is? Be caught in this permanent rat race. YouTube. YouTube. That's literally the only answer to pretty much any question that we ask ourselves. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, unless you're building that fan base where you could take a couple of weeks off or a month off and come back. Because yeah. people, I don't think it's very common for people to see one of your videos and then go to your TikTok and just keep watching backwards and backwards and backwards. Whereas on yeah. YouTube, if people like who you are as a oh, character... Bro, I go down the rabbit hole. Right. You do that on YouTube. You'll be like, if someone uploads daily and you watch that video for the day and you can't wait for it again, you'll go back to all the videos that were there before you subscribed. Yeah. You know that Jenny Hoyos girl that we've watched? Yeah. Girl? Yeah. Why, 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 why are you saying it? Like yeah, because I, I saw a podcast with her recently. You, you say what you're going to say first. Okay, so she just launched her own, like, marketing ag agency um, thing in terms of, like, um, like, teaching you how to be a creator, how to hook people, blah, blah, blah. And she's charging, she's charging $300 for the course. And I don't know how many signups she got, but I'm judging by the interaction she got in her post. She got she got quite a lot of signups. I uh, yeah, I think courses on how to go viral and how to be a creator are just gonna people are start gonna start to re and this is the mental thing. I think parents are starting to see that that's a course a child could take instead of going to college. Yep. yep. So parents would be willing to pay for that course. Dude, it's crazy. It's like the amount of... That's why I'm telling you, if me and you fail, let's just do social media agency. Because it's like, yes, yes, a lot of it is formulaic, but it's also like you have to look a certain way and appeal to a certain crowd of people or you have to like have some sort of edge. Like, bro, if I was missing an arm and I had a nub and I was cooking... I'm in there, bro. I mean, you can still make that happen. Dude, but... <laughs> so it's like, obviously, like, you can be the most... Like, you can know everything, but still not succeed in, like, that type of game, which is a huge drawback, I don't... But... I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I agree with you. I used to agree with no, that. That actually is true. That is true. That is true. I take that back. Because Drew does... You know the guy that stays in, like, the... Like the Capsa Hotels videos that we've looked at and stuff, Drew does things. Yes. Um, I've actually, I've talked to Drew quite a few times. Like we're mutuals and he's really, really, he's really cool. He's really down to earth. But he is, he's boring. His tone is boring. And 
and he's not very conventionally attractive, but his videos still do well. Is it, is it but editing? He's also doing things that he's also doing things and showing people things that like nobody's gonna ever experience. Right, so that's the weird aspect. If I was still traveling, that's what I'd do. I'd do exactly what Drew does. Because before me and Hannah separated, like I had a huge like plan. That's what I was just gonna start moving into. Is I was gonna stay in like four or five like ridiculously like insane looking things, and then I was just gonna like montage not montage it, but make it in, in that conglomerate like a video because my fucking my shorts for like uh, for staying in capsule hotels or like obscure stays and stuff like that pull millions of views yeah they did i well it doesn't really matter obviously i tell you whatever but so the, there's a video that i made about going into like the like that space thing capsule hotel in thailand okay bro i walked in there i paid twelve dollars actually i think i paid nine dollars paid this lady nine dollars i went in the thing i filmed everything i laid in the bed like i was falling asleep i went back to the the hotel and edited the video and posted it you got like 20 million views and i made like a thousand dollars from that that's a nine dollar investment <laughs> that's a nine dollar investment so he's done he's done pretty well on that one and i didn't even have to i didn't even stay there i was there for 20 minutes yeah i get and but you're you're right though that that is part of the rat race the short form is part of the rat race isn't it yeah you made a thousand dollars and I don't say there's anything against you, but... But it's not continuously recurring. Right. And you've built... Essentially, you've built nothing... Not that it's your fault, but you've built nothing from it. It's not like now you have five new customers, ten new customers that That's might buy I'm your saying. product. Or if I was doing something like Drew was doing, where every video is kind of along those same lines, like, I'm sure I could build quite a lot of longevity from it, because... It would be just a direct correlation from my highest performing short form into a long form. And then I would just take each individual stay. If I did five in a video, that's five shorts. Yeah, yeah. And then mm. each short is almost guaranteed to pull like 10 million plus views. I, so yes, you could do that. I've had a different train of thinking because I used, I used to think, like, let's do a meta style video and then I can cut that into multiple shorts. Like kind of what we were thinking with Snake Island and Bucky's, Bussies. Yeah. But I then started to realize that actually, I think the viewer then takes that as you're not, you're not doing it because you're really enjoying it. You're doing it to get views because now you're trying to maximize how many views you get out of exact of this because you're cutting it up and you're thinking about it from a perspective of how do I get more eyes on this? Not how did I make a video that I enjoyed doing? But how many viewers actually come from short form? If they come from your short form video, they're gonna watch your video. If they don't come from short form, they're never gonna watch your full length video. I've never known. It's true, but then uh, they're they're tainted because they've come from your short form to your long form, and then once they start watching your, let's say they start watching your long form, they now see that you're dividing it up and putting it into shorts, and then they start to grasp the idea that actually you're just trying to maximize gain from lower amounts of effort or less effort. No, I agree. And there's not really any way around that, but also like it's, it would be almost impossible unless you had a whole team to film separate short form content from your long form. Content. I agree. I agree. Unless they're not the same meta style. Like, so right now you're thinking I make a meta style long form and from that I can make meta style short form, right? Yeah. So, and I, I tried, but I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I didn't have the mental capacity to be able to, it was, it's hard, it isn't it? Hard. Like you've, it you've actually hard. done it and it's hard. Like when I was in Japan, I made like recurring, um, between the, the month and a half I was in Japan, I made over $10,000 on YouTube and AdSense. Yeah. But it was, it, <sighs> It was so upsetting because when I left Japan, I was like, damn, I, I, well, one, I don't want to leave. But two, I pretty much worked nonstop. My phone was always out. I was always recording and I was, and we were always editing. Like it just did not stop. I really didn't get to like put my phone down and just like breathe and enjoy and explore without it. Yeah. Cause you're always thinking everything you're doing there is just, it's for content, not for you. Yes. And I think when you don't, 
and this isn't a knock on you, when you don't like love, love, love the process, the whole process, it does feel like a massive chore. And I don't mean that as a knock on you saying you're just making videos for the views, but you don't, I don't get the idea that you love the planning, the filming, the editing, the whole process as much as, I don't know, someone like me. Well, I've started to enjoy editing a lot more recently. Okay. Um, but it's like, uh, it's, I think it's, it's just the short form aspect of it just feeling like a never ending, like exhausting train, you know, it's, it's like short form is the nine to five version of content creation. Because you're always having to think of a new idea. You're always trying to think of a per, uh, a perfect hook. You're like, it's versus like a YouTube video and you can plan it out. You can take your day to film it. You can take a day to edit it. Well, because you feel like one video a week on long form is, is acceptable. Whereas TikTok should be a cup more than like at least three times a week. And that's like, that's if you want to be nice about it. Yeah. Because you see all these people that post like TikToks and they make, uh, you know, there's people that post two or three TikToks a day still. That's mental. Yeah. But that's, that's like, it's not, that's mostly like talking head stuff, isn't it? There's no, no real like, stuff, yeah. like let's say Carter PCs, he still makes what four a day. He's been doing that for the last couple of years. And, but his stuff is just f filming straight to the camera. I don't, th I can't imagine there's a huge amount of planning that goes on unless it's a no, no, huge not, response of vid. But he still makes more money than the both of us combined. Yeah, very true. Yeah, we, <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no knock on what he's doing at all. <laughs> no, no, I agree, I agree. Um, but it is, it's that's finding that balance. Does. That's exactly what Miles does. Yeah. But also he has hella connections, bro. His family comes from like the music industry oh. and videography industry. So his mom, his mom like works for like high, like clientele in, um, New York and his sister works for like high clientele in LA. So, so he's hooked up with contacts. He's hooked up, bro. Like his Google partnership that he got, like. Earlier on this year, um, was only because like his mom was working with Google at the time, and she was like, "Hey, my son does social media. Do you want to work with them?" And she, they were like, "Yeah." And he made like the average man's yearly salary from that deal. Did I tell you um, how much one of the? Yeah, I think I did, didn't I? How disgusting is that to hear? It's about knowing people, bro. It's like half of the game is about knowing people. You don't even have to pull numbers. You just got to know the person. Like that deal that I did with Intel for $20,000 was because I know Peachy Tech, Christina, and she works on Intel's team in San Diego at the main head office. And she, we were just playing League of Legends one day. And she goes, hey, do you want a PC? Uh, we got, we got, we have a campaign going on. Like if you want to do the campaign, I can mention it due to them. So yeah, 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 sure, that's fine. My manager meets with them, talks and everything. She's like, okay, we set out 20,000. I said, what? I have mental, that's mental. And I, I literally called Christina and I said, thank you so much. You quite literally just gave me $20,000. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is, that's mad, like, isn't it? I was it? so, like, um... Flabbergasted. Yeah, yeah, but I was so, like, gratuitous towards it. Uh, thankful. Thankful, yeah, yeah. I was so like thankful for it. Like I, did, I really called her and I was like, "Thank you." Yeah, cause that's that's. I mean, that's like, it's not life changing money, but it gives you a lot of breathing room. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's it's crazy. Um, all right, we've got to. I've got to head off to go out in a few minutes. But was there what was there something else that you had that you wanted to discuss? I don't know. Oh, if I was. sent you those videos. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh yeah, I will, I'll, I'll watch them after this and send you an audio message. Okay. Oh, I guess I, I'll just, do you want me to just give you my thoughts now? 
Yeah, that's fine. I started filming, like, I started throwing more, like, little Easter eggs in my videos, too, because I was talking to Josh Lavin, the guy that I told you, like, is blown up from eating, like, the criminals' food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he always puts random people, like, Nick Akato and, like, Shrek and stuff in his videos, so I started to do that and, like, the one with the pizza that I sent you. Okay. It's, like, there's so many weird things in there. Alright, Lonely Man's Meal. This Corey. is Lonely Man Meals, and today we're reviewing my friend Corey's most depressing meal along with his most depressing story. So Corey met this girl at a tanning salon that he attended daily, and he thought the girl that was there was older, but Fine. she ended up being 22 years old with a 5 year old kid. Meanwhile, Corey's 37. He had a good relationship with her and things seemed to be fine. They were going on dates weekly, giving each other good morning texts, and talking every day on the phone. However, one day she just suddenly stopped replying to all of his messages, and he hadn't heard you from her. Then. Corey says this really frustrated and, and confused him because he doesn't really know what went wrong. The crazy thing is this only happened a couple weeks ago and he fell head over heels <laughs> for this girl. So now since then he's off. been eating dark chocolate, yes, brown yes. sugar cinnamon, buttered toast, There's and so vodka in, yeah. almost every day. I am not even joking with you guys. Corey, I really love you. We've known each other for years so I'm gonna give you a 4 out of 10 on this meal and you might want to try to date girls your age. Okay. There's a meme from him that we made in the military. He's gonna be pissed. Plus size my ass. I um yeah, I really I... like this framing, by the way. Like you're oh, yeah. you're off center. Everything about it. Um. That's exactly why I did it. I didn't want to be too symmetrical because I've been watching a lot of like cinematography and videography, and I was like, oh, I need to slightly off center like my thing because then it'll just be too much. I don't know if you were going for this, and I guess it's going to be kind of rude if you weren't, but it it gives me lonely single man vibes. I don't know if that's what you're going no, for, but it's that's it's the funny. Whole premises of it all, dude. It's per. This shot is perfect. Um, like I'm just sitting there, like eating the meal by myself. Like the good girl swallow shot glass. Oh yeah. Outrageous. Um, yeah, I like that first one. Okay, next one in the car. Welcome back to Lonely Man's Meals, and today we'll be reviewing my best friend Ben's most depressing dinner of all time along with the story. Now this all started back in 2019 when we're on deployment, and a couple months into it, his wife decided to give him a call. She simultaneously told this man that she was cheating on him, got pregnant from somebody else, and wanted a divorce all at the same time. Now I kid you not when I say for the next six months straight, this man, all this man ate was dino chicken nuggies, Velveeta mac and cheese, vodka, and some pickles from a jar. Now the key to this meal to make it really complete is you would fall asleep forgetting that you made it the night of because you are so drunk passing out on the couch that what was once hot would now be cold and you would end up eating it the so next you're also morning for acting breakfast. Out as the the person best part too. about this was he ended up losing 40 pounds that is a wild in, well, way to around six months. I love you Ben and I'll always be there for you. 7.3 <laughs> out of 10, you know I'm a sucker for mac and cheese. Yeah dude. wife is a hoe. I like that a lot. I think this style of video, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anyone do this kind of style, and it is very depressing. I don't know if you've seen the dude who, he loves having a nine to five, and he just films what he does going to his nine to five, but it's so boring and makes you like want to die. That's just hilarious. Yeah, that. So I don't know if he does that because he knows what he's doing, or if he actually just enjoys it, and that's him. All right, I'll watch the last one. This is rating and making famous so people's favorite meals from around the world. And today we'll be focusing on the man, the myth, the legend, the biggest name in football history, Erling Haaland. <laughs> I honestly don't even know if any of that is true, but all I know is my opinion is all that matters. And I also read that earlier this morning in a Google News article. It has to be real. Also, Erling has to have the most incredible food palette I've ever seen somebody else in my life have. Because what we're making today combines two of the best foods on the face of the planet, and it's pizza and kebabs. And that is a 200 IQ alpha move if I've ever seen one. This dish was super easy to make though, and the hardest part was just finding the sumac seasoning since I only live around white people. Anyways, he's going to be signed by real Madrid. Oh my god. 7.7 .7 out of 10. It's gonna be signed by Real Madrid. <laughs> that's good because like that's not a thing. He loves being at City doesn't he? And so people are gonna get rage at that. Wait 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 that's not an actual thing. I don't think so. I think he's enjoying being at Man City. Mm. And I, I don't think he's gonna move anytime soon. You wait wait. Oh okay. I thought I thought you meant like he he couldn't get signed to them if you oh. wanted to. Oh. 
No, I'm sure they would take him in a heartbeat. Anyone would take oh, him. But I think, Jesus. yeah, I think he, but you stating that he is going to go there, I think that's going to kick up a few people. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I like, I like all those three. The first two, the trouble is, is that if you're going to do, like the, those first two videos in that series are such a distinct style that if you go for a different style of video, like the, the Erling one was more like upbeat. Um, that's the issue I keep running into with the short form content, bro. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you have to have the same feel to your videos, which I know sucks. Yep. I mean, obviously, I'm not, gonna, I'm not telling you to not post it. I think try it and see what you enjoy. No, I know. I agree. Um, I wonder if you should make up... Instead of doing your actual friends, you make up that that's a a real person. No, I, I mean make up that it's like some famous person. Like what? Oh, yeah. What? Instead of the meal that people eat on death row, what would they have eaten while they were committing their crimes? Like you imagine what they would have eaten, how their life would have been. So oh, you. Oh yeah, I get like super storytelling with it. Yeah. So oh, yeah, all like exactly the same style. But instead of choosing your friend, you choose Jeffrey Dahmer and you'd be like, this is, you know, how Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer eats on a day when this he was... This is what Jeffrey Dahmer would have ate, like... While he was killing, killing people. Mass, yeah. Amounts of people. Yeah. Just raw meat, bro. Yeah. It's just human. I'm just it's just human. Like, <laughs> you, should, you should get a shot. eating myself in the next clip. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you should, like, you're at the chopping board chopping up meat and you have, like... You Photoshop a foot coming into the shot or something, or like a hand so you can. Like I pull a steak in, but I track a foot over top of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, leave that one for later. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so wild. There'd be so many people mad, but I think it'd be so funny though. Yeah, I, I, because I think you want to, you want to go on famous people because if it's just your friend, I don't think people care as much as if it's you know some famous person they've heard about. Yeah. Well, my, my hope with that is I'm going to basically more so hit the strings of the people who have been super lonely and depressed, like the men. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, it just feels like relatable. Uh, yeah, and, and to like take clips from the whatever podcast of what girls, like X, girls finding guys. Oh my God. You know the dude who, I think he stitches them, he like find like a girl saying like a stupid kind of ick, like a guy who snores and he switches over to his notes and writes it down. Yeah, like that's types so it in. Funny, bro. It has me dead. Yeah, you should take take some of those maybe and throw that in. But I think yeah, I really liked those first two. I liked the style of that. It was you're playing you're playing a character. You know, yeah. it's not ideal because it doesn't build into who you are in terms of building a brand. But at this point, everyone almost builds somewhat of a character unless you're doing like a professional manner. Yeah, I would because I would say that on TikTok I am there's yes. part of me that's a character, whereas on YouTube I'm just me. Yep. But you have exactly. to be a character. You have to build a character that people enjoy watching, on short form yeah, no, content. Exactly, and that's like if you want views. Yeah, and that's like one thing that I've been telling myself too is like I have to have a character because it's not like YouTube where you can like have different moods of videos depending on what you're doing. Yeah. It's like TikTok, bro. I I had people up until like a month or two ago asking me where my um like Cristiano Ronaldo, like my other like more of my soccer training videos were. And I saw. I was like, what? I know that was ages like, ago. Three shorts about this. Yeah. Like a year ago. That was just a mini series. And that did uh, that actually did pretty good on YouTube, which is also why I was thinking about doing more fitness stuff too. Hmm. Uh, dude, it sounds yeah, like you're in that. No clean silverware. It's amazing. <laughs> it sounds like you're in that circle at the moment of just so many ideas swirling around in your head that you're not sure what to <laughs> land on. So much, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to tell you other than I think pick which one. Forget about the views. I, okay, I think I think TikTok. TikTok, you make videos for exposure. I think you. For me, I'm just making TikToks to get the max amount of views. 
I, I've, yeah. I've given up on building a brand on TikTok. I just don't, I don't see that it's possible yeah, because with who I am. Unless you're actually building a brand, like yeah. you have a product that you're trying to build around it, I, I think TikTok's point, like pointless. Yeah. Right now. I've only seen one person do it really well. That's, um, I think it's Minted New York. I forget the guy's name. Oh, dude, that dude's rocking. Yeah. He's making so much money, dude. Yeah. But he also, he plays into the role of being... The pretty boy living in New York with the blonde hair, the glasses, the marathon runners. Stylish, so like trendy. All those like, um, like granola people. Yeah. Like those, <laughs> yeah. those like granola people, dude. Like those like cringy, like hipster, dipster people. Yeah. But I mean, like it's good. It does good. Yeah. He's the only person that I've seen successfully build a brand on TikTok. And he's obviously done it very well. But... Yeah, I, I'm just, looking at TikTok as just a, a place for viewers like and doable. things that I enjoy doing. Like if there's I there's this recent protein brand that took. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Carry on. There's a recent protein brand that just took off because of TikTok too, called Seek. S E E Q or something like that, and it's literally it's like flavored water protein versus like having like this thick like nasty powder, and it's and these people I think they've sold over like like six thousand six thousand units in the past couple of months. Jeez. It's crazy. That's pretty good, straight from TikTok. All right, I've got to jump. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you have stuff to send over later or if you want to keep talking, but if you have ideas on thoughts as you progress, feel free to send them over. Because I know it's just kind of like most of it at the moment is just kind of talking it out, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Oh, um, you don't use your thumbnail guy or editor anymore, do you? Roy? No. No? Okay. Why? What's up? Well, I, I, I'm thinking about finding a thumbnail guy. I mean, I can give you his information. He, he's still good. I just, I really fell in love with the process of making the thumbnails myself. Yeah, I know. I enjoy it too. I'm just not sure how much I have time for doing it. No, that's another thing too. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, want, I want the entirety of YouTube to be like, I'm just filming myself. I don't really want to have to think too much about YouTube. I just want to, you know, post it because it. Well, it makes sense not... doing it that way though, because like, the more you alleviate from yourself, the more you can focus on like actually trying to scale and do what you want to do. Right. Yeah, and you stop obsessing over how to make things different, and then you you find yourself back in the retention game. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, I'm gonna hop off. It's good to talk to you. Right, I'll see you, man. I'll, send, I'll probably send uh, some more stuff over here in a little bit. All right. Sounds good. Enjoy the day. Later. All right. See you, Thank bud. You. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. I think we're going to go to uh, Sam's Club now and get some fat bags of candy. Some fat boy bags. All right. Let's go. After this. Okay. Let's go. Nailed it. Are you waving? That was nice. Rugi, we're going into the holy mecca. Are you looking forward to getting some candy that you won't be able to eat? I have this other thought that if you go trick or treat, like we'll go trick or treating with him and we'll get him to trick or treat and get candy, but it's so obvious that he's not gonna be eating it, it's gonna be Shay and I eating it. Isn't that weird? Look, Rugi, look at the size of this TV. 86 inches. That is unreal. I can't believe the size of that. Dude, it's been so long since I've been to somewhere with electronics and seen the size of these TVs. That's like a whole wall. All right, do you want to sit in, Rugs? Do you see the huge TV? Yeah. I'll push it. You want to push it? I can push it. Yeah, I can push it. Oh, that's a nice fireplace, Rooks. What are you looking? Oh my goodness! What is it, Rooks? Oh! Do you see it?
Get around the side. Oh. Rugi. Oh, look at the nutcracker. Uh, yeah, what is it? Dude, where were these, like, games when I was a kid? Like, that monster truck Hot Wheels thing? He, we should get him that for Christmas. He loves trucks. Oh, Rugi, look! Oh, what is that? I'm behind you. Is that cool? Oh, wow. Rugi, we're going to need some more passion, some more energy. Oh, yeah. How much is that? Can't see, I don't know. The jets and. I guess I could. Do you have the app? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, recommended for 13 plus. So, uh, my mental age is more like 12, so. Can't have that. That's not too bad at all. How fast does it go? 14 miles per hour. Nah, trash, Rugi. You want this? You mean dad. Come over here and show dad this one thing that you want to do. Wait, you're gonna show me? Oh, this would be cool to have in that back square area. Oh, turf, no cancer. Oh, Rugi, what's that? Doesn't that look cool? Remember we talked about this? We said maybe for Christmas? Oh, maybe you'll get that for Christmas. Yeah, we just can't get him something every time we go shopping, can we? I do, I f like, feel terrible. Tell it bye-bye, maybe for Christmas we oh, can yeah. do it, okay? Yeah, can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye. Okay, good job. Can you wave goodbye? Well done. He liked that more? He liked the dump truck one more. Okay. Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. I'll turn around. Rugi, as much as I love my feet being in the shot, can you point it at me? <laughs> no way. Is that driving on its own as well? Yeah, Rugi, look at that driving on its own. Oh, wow, it's driving on its own. Wait, did, did you say that Gap, that this was never that never stood for gay and proud for you when you growing up that was in england it was just gay and proud like if you wore that <laughs> what do you mean you mean please <laughs> good job <laughs> this is how um, this was like, this is the standard for biscuits in England, like around Christmas time. This is how you buy boxes of biscuits. How biscuits? What the hell am I saying? Pure this bread. is how you buy biscuits. Yeah. So you know, like my mum has those tins everywhere. Yeah. That's where they're from, like around this Christmas time. Rugi, where is all the, where are all the sweets, the candy? Yeah, we should get another one, I think. Yeah. Is it down there? I wouldn't normally come shopping. I'm only coming shopping because of the candy. But this is like one of the things that my wife and I have set up in the relationship is our different roles. Like 
for eight hours a day, mine is to essentially just make money. And hers for those eight hours is to do what needs to be done for the house in terms of food and cooking. Which is probably a good thing because I'm not particularly great at cooking. And then once I'm done with work, it's all responsibilities are split. Rugi, look at all this candy. No, two and, I mean, this one only has 255 pieces in it. Look at the size of this. You want that one too? Rugi. Look at the size of that, Rugs. No, not interested. That's too much. Can oh. Yeah, like, I was thinking about seeing how long it takes me to get through this, but I probably shouldn't be eating 255 bags in a year, should I? Is it, they only have these three, four types? There's more stuff over there. Okay. Let's go and have a look at that. Let's go and see what's over here, Rooks. What is that? What is that, Luke's? You better look out for trees from now on, it's get you. It's so embarrassing when you do something like that and there's just no reaction. It's like when you tell a joke and no one hears it. That? More stuff down there. I can't believe the, that's all they have. Then maybe I'll just get myself. Let's just get one of those. I have been craving pop like so badly. I want just like one pack, but I know that I cannot have. You want just one pop tart? This is mad. Like, when you think about how bad all this food is, like Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, and Pringles. And like, who's, who's gonna be eating that? It's kids normally, isn't it? And that's the, like, the baked box. Looks so plain and boring in comparison. All right, this second recording. All right. Leave it there, please, Roots. Right. Oh. Do you want to come this way? Okay. All right. Do you, okay, hold on. There you go. All right, pop it. My wife's just told me Ruger normally acts much more excited when we go to the store, so that was a bit of an anomaly. But I've been doing the thumbnail for the video that's going out today, and I thought I'd share some kind of interesting parts and thoughts I've had to it. So first of all, um, the video, there's, there's a, a few interesting parts I could have made the thumbnail of, but I thought the best one for making a, um, a thumbnail would be the data center. So making the, setting up the new hard drive. Not very exciting, but as I'm, share my screen, as I'm making a thumbnail for it, I get to this one here. And I quite like the idea of a data center going in like way behind, like off into the distance behind me. And then I'm stood there like, kind of like what is going on? Maybe like just with a USB stick. That's a good idea. And you have, do I even have a USB stick? And then you have that in behind, like a, the data center in behind. Might have to put, a flipping, you know, I could hold a memory stick or I could hold, I have a Raspberry Pi. We can try both, couldn't we? Like holding this 
or holding a USB stick like this. I think that is a better option. But as I made this decision to go on this, the data center as the thumbnail, I also realized that in my few clips at the beginning, I hadn't added anything about the data center or like working on the hard drive. So, which is kind of annoying because I'd already uploaded the video to YouTube, it's been processed and everything. So I changed up the intro to add in a shot of me doing the hard drive and then um, exporting it right now to re-upload, which means it won't be up for another couple of hours anyway. But but I should probably take this photo before I get my hair cut. My other concern is that I have the needle mat video to edit. And that was all filmed with my hair long. So if I go and get it cut now and I need to film refilm something, I'm a bit out of luck, aren't I? Yes. It's interesting talking with Kenny this morning that um, you see the kind of, I almost call it turmoil that a creator goes through to try and figure out if they're making the right moves or not. In terms of, am I making the right decisions for my content going forward? Because there's no one to really bounce your ideas off of. You kind of just, you're always working on your own. What color t-shirt? <laughs> Looks like I'm going to take this t-shirt again. Oh gosh, good catch, Oliver. Let's close you. I think, I th I think I'll probably need to take off the inmate from there. But we'll f figure that out. If I put this... annoying. You do slide onto there, but you're the wrong way around. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Quick outfit change. Um, let's get physical, physical, I wanna get, oh, jinkies, let's get you level, really not much light going on, is there, I'm gonna have to backlight a little bit, I'm going to try the USB sick, sick, and with the chipboard mode. I'm going to take the, no, I feel like that should be part of the brand, shouldn't it? That there's a chain here. So this will need to go. world cool we're doing intermittent shooting no we're not we're doing five second timer okay chipboard Okay, 
Let's see how those look. Yeah, oh, but here. Yeah. I've got to leave in about 10 minutes. You know, one of the things I did when I quit my job, or like, when I, oh, this was the first day of my FMLA, FML, FMLA leave. That first day, I, like knowing what was to come, I, got a haircut the next day because I really wanted to, whether it worked or not, I wanted there to be some separation between like what I was doing and what I was going to be doing. So I just got a nice haircut, made me feel nice and clean and fresh and like off to a good start. This photo, <laughs> I thought I thought one eye was trained on the um, USB stick and the other eye was trained on the camera. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one's even further over than the camera. Okay, so first one. I feel like a USB stick, but I do like the green. Let's go for that one and that one, for now. Done, done. Let's, uh, let's change it in raw. Light, maybe a little bit more exposure, contrast, we'll bring that down a bit, color. Um, 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 vibrance, yeah boy, we'll get you up. Okay, then we got color mixer. So the saturation of this green, it's gonna go up, the luminance. The orange, I'd say the orange is actually pretty darn good. That's a pretty sexy orange. Um, leave my eyes the way they are. I do want to put a radial gradient on my face. Let's take out some of the, make it look smoother. Clarity and texture. Oh, all over your skin look gorgeous. I feel like a circuit board is better. So this is a much better mask. Just refine the slight edges. Why aren't you in there, you little batty? I shouldn't, you shouldn't say that word these days, should you? Because Batty, we always use as a term for a gay. Like I've just now realized what that means. Not, I've just not just now realized what it means, but just realized that it could be taken the wrong way. Okay. All right. Invert the mask and then generative fill, which is this one here. So let's take, oh goodness. I guess I can just read that. Let's see what comes back. Hopefully something lovely. Yeah, like I don't mean to say things that are offensive. 
Oh yeah, that looks really good. All right, Governor, so what happened there? Nine. I guess I'll just do this again. refine it afterwards. Seems all right for now, doesn't it? I do need to change out that. Fix the hair after 46. I should be leaving right now. Um, okay. Once this generates, I'll just do this while it. Oh, you nightmare. Invert selection, generate fill, go. Yeah, I'm about to come down to, or come up. That looks kind of cool. Yeah, all right, let's stop. And I'll see you after the old air cut. All right, bye. Lovers, and pretty sweet. This worked out pretty well right before I left. I think I just need maybe to, I don't like, how that looks there. Should we do? I don't. I don't know, mate. Yeah, yeah, that didn't work. So I'll just I'll leave it, and that's fine. And then we need some text up in this. I actually think this looks pretty good. Uh, so if I do T for text, and what should we write? Um, oh gosh, I don't even know what the title is to the video because it's got to be something to do with... Um, Data, data center. And then this has to, the title has to exploit some form of questioning that also relates to the title. Chat GPT, I'm gonna need you boy. All right, um, in three to five words, give me 10 title titles to a YouTube video that attract attention for a video about Finding and setting up a solution to a data problem. Fixing data nightmares is kind of like clammy, isn't it? Oh man, I don't even know. Got space. I'm all right with that as the title. Make you a little bit larger than life. Got 
got space, I could probably do it getting that bit bigger. But let's add some stroke to it. Yeah, let's make that bigger. Got space. Did it again. Got space. That's too big, isn't it? There you go, you little monkey. File, export, save for web legacy, save. Thumb one. Please tell me I uploaded that video earlier. I don't think I did, did I? I don't think I did. Darn it. How silly of me. That was very poor planning. I mean, even then, in hindsight, the first clip should be the data box. I try and hang myself. Are you okay? <coughs> oh, don't tell me I've got to do tons of screwing. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. All right. Uh, the video was called, it's a prep vlog. So prep vlog, what number is it? It is 18, 018. Uh, prep vlog 18 um, There's a so there's a phrase I'm thinking about which is more often used for perverts, where it's like check the hard drive as if there's going to be something on there. Great, great news! Everything I recorded there. Oh, the screen recording might have it. My audio wasn't working. So hopefully the screen recording had it. Uh, yeah, the title, I'm not really sure. Um, let's change the uh, five, okay, screen recording. Excuse me. It's really not much point to me turning away and burping when the mic is basically in my mouth, isn't it? In three to five words, give me 10 titles to a YouTube video that attract attention for a video about finding and setting up a solution to a data problem. About a guy. Setting up a new hard drive. God, that is mundane. That is so boring. Um, my storage upgrade. Because it needs to link in with the thumbnail, which is showing a data center. My own data center. Uh, give me 10 alternatives to data center. My own digital tech hub. My digital tech hub. 
MP4. My digital tech hub. Ah, that's kind of rubbish, isn't it? My data facility. That's kind of weird. My data facility. See, my, my thought with these titles being the way they are is that they're not very easy to read. But I'm hoping that doing them this way, people will be able to recognize and it's less about the title. Like when I think back to the Casey Neistat era, I think, let me finish this thought first. When I think back to the Casey Neistat era, I think I never really bothered what the title was or the thumbnail, it didn't matter as long as it was a Casey video. And I guess I'm kind of going for the same thing. But why do I talk about Casey? Why do I reference Casey so much? It's because that was, I mean, I guess it just had such a huge impact on me. Uh, yes. All right. I... Weird weekend vlog where I set up my new data center. What else happens in the video? Um, stretching routine. And what else? Oh, stretching routine and trying the new Sonic Twisted Lime Red Bull. Okay. Next. Oh, back. Let me get my thumbnail that I just created, that heavenly bad boy. I get that I'm in kind of a weird position right now. And that is because I'm using a stool. A stool. I saved this to the wrong place, didn't I? Oliver, you sausage. There we go. I think that's a sweet thumbnail. That's that done until it's like finished processing. But I look at this one. I thought this was a really good thumbnail. But uh, look at this actually. Average view duration is the highest so far. I, by a long shot, like I'm 247 more than usual. And this is, I think, the first video that I added the intro section of what's to come. Re impressions click-through rate, 0.2%. Oh my goodness. I think... I'm definitely going to have to redo that. Let me save this off. But... I'm gonna have to find another dog. I think it's the dog that is just too dark in the shot. It's a black problem, you know? For contrast, only for contrast. So I was thinking if I find a pretty cute looking dog Kind of. I thought this was fire. Maybe it's just like. Should I crop in? Should the dog be closer? What if I do that? Come 
on T, okay. Like that. Let's try, I don't know, let's try that. thumb that is three and then honey or is it the title it might be the title Try changing the title and see. Okay, I guess let's give that a go. In which case. change the current title. I agree, it is really hard to read and people need to be able to read it in a flash. Which then gets me on to, should I be putting prep for vlog 18 at the beginning? My, I got a data facility. Um, I won't bother linking that. All right, let's save it and just see until it's done. Okay, and then also I need to, I need to script out this video, don't I? My channel content. 96% uploaded, good. It's the processing that takes ages though. All right, quick, excuse me again. A little bit of clean up. Clean up on aisle, Oliver's a sexy beast. You know what, mate? I should be copying that photo in, shouldn't I? I don't even remember what photo I used. Oh, goodness. One of those two, so it was this one. No, it wasn't, it was that one. And I can delete the rest of these beauties. Copy that footage over from this morning. don't think that one is the right one. It is not. So we're gonna have to go with this. That's also not the right one, I don't think. Yep. What about you? I have a feeling, honey, you are the right one. Let's get you out, you, you, dead. Uh, relink files, file, relink. Sorry, just just bear with me for a shimmy. 
I'm a, I have a template editing file <clears throat> which has a um, my short form content um, what's it called project set up it has all of my um, sound effects the kind of general position as to where I put them in the video so you you haven't been found and um, so it's easier for me just to copy that each time so that I can instead of having to drag and drop in the right sound effects and go and find them each time. Riser short. Okay. And then you should be linked. No. Okay, done. And then delete render files. Yes, yes, yes. Right click, close. Cool. So now, that one we can delete. That we can delete. And this can go into the template. Let's change the name. Oliver, you absolute twonk pot. So, we don't need the 4K template. We do. Uh, we do want a clips. Vertical. Yes. All right. Right click. Close. I sh I expect this to be like a couple of seconds. Duplicate. I don't need these, do I? All right, bruv. Template copy, you're going to be called 021. So today is not a side quest, is it? Today is. Wait, yesterday was a side quest. Edit vlog ten twenty-five twenty-three and copy the clip in. Sweet. Do I need to get my own clips out to post? Maybe I'll just, I'll get one out and ready. Because we've got an hour and 20 while the video process is on YouTube. So let's find a good clip. And if you're not from America and you're wondering what Sonic is, it is the, it's the epitome. The, I, di I did it again. I can't, someone probably going to put me in jail or sue me or I'll get cancelled, but there is, I don't know what it is, but there is always, so if I were homeless, I would try and provide. You can't serve spaghetti, they're not even dog food. Yeah, okay. make sure you be very shopping. careful. That was a bird, wasn't it? That was a bird, I'm convinced that was, no, that was Khaleesi. That, that was Khaleesi, I tried it. Oh, don't tell me I've got to do tons of screwing. My wife told me I'm no good at that. I'm hanging out with Rudy. I'm putting stuff in the washing machine. I turn around and he stood there next to me I would just feel, I would feel super cool just in there gaming, even though that's probably like the opposite of cool. You know, when you're listening to some guy who's like, 
like a, a TikToker who's listening to music for the first time and that's their like that's what they do and they set they go in. Here's the bass hits. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna um, turn you off. Am I? I guess I guess I guess we'll just talk through whatever I'm gonna be doing here. Alright. Don't need that, don't need that. Let's put let's put you away. You can get you can get done, son. I don't need to format you yet, but I'll put you on charge. Okay, oh, yes. Okay. Put you away. Oh. It turns out I might need you. I'd really love to have a bag of gear that just stays in the car. We, I, we're just going to glaze past the part where I just farted. <laughs> I'd really like just one, I, I'd like all the gear, I'd like gear that I need to go and shoot anywhere. All of that just in one bag, okay? Then that's, that bag stays in the car. I'd like my stuff to be set up here, that stays there. So I have to pick up and move everything. You know what would be really nice then is for that bag to have one single plug-in that charges everything in the bag. But unless everything in the bag is plugged in to one source, that's never going to happen, which I'm not going to do that in a bag. I have the flipping USB snap off inside of the camera or something. This is the... I wonder if this is one of those instances where you're watching and you're being like, it's like a Blue's Clues video. You're like, it's over there! Because like you remember it because you're far smarter than I am. Look at the size of this bloody receipt that I got from CVS. I bought one thing and this is it. I'll put this on like a flipping cape. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here at the moment, so I'm just going to close you out. That was me going through to find a clip, and I'm not in the right position for that. I still like, I haven't even finished clearing up. Did I finish off with you two? I think I did, but I'll put you there because I'm not sure. This, this, this. The chapstick can bugger off. This pen is the good one. Trash, Mike can go over here. Um, we did shoot a lot on here, also shot a lot on something else, on the microphone. That's all exporting. Mike, you can go there. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Phone. You can start charging. And let's start writing the script. Yes, yes, yes. Dude, how much better do the audio, you, I don't know if you were here for the previous videos, how much better does the audio sound now that I don't have it boosted? So much better, Oliver, yeah, so much better. All right, Oliver, what's your flaw in this that I don't trust the process? That's number one rule. Uh, don't, oh, let me show my screen. 
trust process. What is my strength? You know, actually, this video is already really long as it is. I'm not going to take you through the scripting process. Um, I'm going to script, film, then maybe I'll walk through some of the decisions I make in the edit. Let's do that. So let's stop here and I'll see you in like an hour or so. Two hours probably, more like five. That's the current situation. Not very easy. You okay, Lila? <laughs> okay, get back to it. Okay, finished with the video now. So I'm going to, I'm not going to post it because it's a bit later than I want it to be. So I'll just save that for tomorrow. And it, I should really start doing that so that I'm reviewing it in the morning. The other thing is, uh, my barber and I, we, I don't know why I'm thinking about this. We took Rugi to get his hair cut first. He looks top notch. And then Barbara and I were talking about like just things, we're about the same age, so things that we had growing up, like MSN, which is like a chat messenger program, dial-up internet, and then we somehow got onto chat roulette and Omegle. Uh, I don't know what it was. I tried to go on Omegle on my phone, tried to enter it, and it says I was banned. Um, <laughs> but I kind of wanted to try that today, but I'm not going to have time. So let's try that tomorrow uh, and just see if it's the same as it used to be. I Y K Y K. Nailed it. If you know, you know. Yeah. So let's get that tomorrow. It's also I'm. I just had this thought. There's. So I live in Kansas. It's not a huge amount in terms of scenery in Kansas, but there is this. I discovered that there's a waterfall in a town or a city called Junction City. Junction City waterfall and. I've heard that it's only actually a cool place when there's been a lot of rain and there's been a lot of rain. So I'm considering, it looks like it's called Geary Falls. Geary Falls, Kansas. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's a bit of a, an ass to get to. Like, mapping it isn't even working here. Maps. Geary Falls. Two hours, ten minutes. That would be you know, a four-hour round trip in a day. It's kind of annoying. I'll have a look at some more pictures. But it would be cool to fly the FPV drone there cruise down that waterfall. I haven't been down a waterfall before. Yeah. What else was there? Checking in on the dude making the um, automation for social media posts. I'm just looking to see if there have been any updates here. Team. I haven't seen much happen. History. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's touched it. I don't know what he's doing, but something on the back end. Yeah, and I made some changes to the thumbnail for the video that I was working on here. I did all over the place. And I think it was a pretty big change, actually. So we went from, is it this one? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's this one. And I realized that the chipboard doesn't stand out at all. It just blends in, which means there's no point in my hand there. So I changed it. I, not only did I bring it closer, but I changed the color of it so it's a bit more contra contrasted. Contrasted. I've also just realized that one of the lights above the E on space <laughs> looks like an accent. Got to spacey. Yeah, but I posted that. Pretty 
where did it say? Zero views so far, that is good. I think it's been up for about an hour now, so nailing it. Right. Video ready for tomorrow. Just kind of like thinking through myself. Fresh cut for tomorrow. Might have a think about this, uh, going to this fool's place. Like thinking about going to this waterfall beforehand was like, um, okay, well let's try and think about a weekend that I could do it. And then I'm like, well at weekends I'm helping out Shay with the baby and it's kind of annoying to make him drive for four hours. But now that I don't have the job that ties me to a desk, I could do this. Should we just do it because it's, because I can? Whoa. Maybe. All right, let's think about it. Uh, see you tomorrow, hot shot. Was there anything else I needed to comment on? Nope, that was it. See you tomorrow.